Hi and welcome to PeaceMeg TV. In today's video tutorial for WordPress, I'm going to be guiding you through the basic usage of Visual Composer. Visual Composer is an add-on for WordPress that allows you to create complex looking page layouts, apply animations and a whole range of other things without knowing any code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you step by step through the fundamental skills required to get the most out of using this versatile and powerful add-on for WordPress. So let's start looking at all that right now. So throughout this video, we're going to be using the latest available version of Visual Composer, and that is version 4.11.2.1. And while there's not a massive difference between this and earlier versions, there are some little nuances that you really need to know to get the most out of this. So with Visual Composer installed and set up, we now create a new page, and as you can see, we've got some new buttons added to our interface. We can edit with the backend editor, which allows us to work inside the admin section of WordPress, or we can invoke the front end editor and switch over to this actual page on our website, and we can edit the elements individually directly on the page itself. We'll take a look at that in a different video. For now, we're going to focus on the backend editor and how we can work inside the admin of WordPress. So when I click on Backend Editor, we're going to replace the normal editor with the Visual Composer editor, which gives us a lot more options to work with. So if we click on Backend Editor, we now switch over to this view. You can see we have a range of new icons available to us. We've got the option for Visual Composer. We can add a new element. We can work with the templates, and that means we can either create a new template or we can invoke a template that's previously been created, or we can use a template that ships with Visual Composer itself. We can expand this out to full screen, we can edit the page settings, or we can switch over to the front end to see what we're working with. We've also got this main area that allows us to quickly add three different options, which mirrors the information we have in the top left hand corner. We can add a new element, we can add a new text block, or we can add a new template. So let's start off by adding an element and seeing what that gives us. So if I click add element, that will open up a new window that gives us a range of all the widgets that are available as part of Visual Composer. Now widgets are effectively individual pieces of building blocks that allow us to control and configure exactly what they do and how we or the end user can interact with those on our website. So as you can see, we've got a whole range of options. We've got rows, text blocks, icons, and we'll look at these in more detail in future videos. We can also sub-filter this information down, so if we want to work on content-based elements, we can click. That will now filter this out and show us only the content-based options. The same with social, structure, WordPress widgets, or we can choose deprecated options. Now, I would avoid using deprecated because, as its name suggests, these are no longer supported. So you can ignore those and leave those out. So if we switch back to all we can start working on building our first page. So for this example, I'm going to start off by inserting a row. Now what happens when we insert a row is that allows us to then section that up into multiple columns if we need to. We can then place the widgets that we want inside that. So the easiest way to think of working with Visual Composer is that everything is built either inside a row or inside a column. So if you're used to working with a spreadsheet, then this is going to be very familiar with you. So with our row created, you can see we now have additional icons that apply specifically to that row. The first icon on the left allows us to drag this to reorder it. So once we have multiple rows, we can reposition this easily by using the little grab handle in the top left hand corner and repositioning this exactly where we want it within the order of the rows in our design. The next option allows us to choose the column layout for this specific row, and this will only apply to this row. So each time you add a new row, you can simply split that up into multiple columns if you need to. So as you can see, we've got a whole range of different options available to us there. And just by clicking on those, the icons below will change themselves to show us exactly what we've set up. So we've got a 50-50 two column row. So if I wanted, I could set that to a two thirds, one third. And as you can see, it'll update and show me exactly what this will look like. I can easily go back to a full width row if I want to. I could even choose custom to create custom layouts. 
We've got the plus option then that allows us to start adding new columns in there. And if we move to the middle, you can see we've got the edit row icon or we've got the trash row icon. If we look on the right hand side, we can toggle this row's visibility so we can click and shrink it down or we can click and expand it. This is great when you're starting to work with very complicated layers where you have multiple rows and things can start to get very, very busy very quickly. The next option we have available is to edit the row. Then we can clone the row. So if we wanted to use the basis of this row to work on another row, and then we can edit the parts we want, or we just simply want to duplicate this row, we can do that by hitting the clone this row. And I'll click on that to show you exactly what I mean. Once I click, we get an identical duplicate of this row, which we can then edit and do whatever we want with. Then finally, we have the trash can, which allows us to delete the row. We'll get a warning just to confirm we want to do this. If you do, click OK. If not, click Cancel. So now that we've created our first row, we can start adding the widgets we want to work with to create the layout for our page structure. So we can click on the plus symbol, and that'll bring up the same window where we can add any of the widget elements that we want. So let's move over and choose a text block for this example. And that will then open up the window that's specific to working with text blocks. As you can see, we can easily move this around. We can resize it to work in the best fashion with the screen size that we're working on. If we take a look at the top, you'll see we've got the general tab, which is what we're working with at the moment. We also have design options. Now, almost every widget you've got with Visual Composer has this design options. And what it allows us to do is to fine tune the margins, apply a border, add padding, and so on to either individual sides or every single side. We can also set some of the options available. So if we applied a one pixel border, we can change the color. We can specify whether the border style uses the defaults that the theme is set up to use, or we can choose individual options to customize this. Now, worth noting at this point, not every theme will be styled to show all of these different options. So you may not have them available in the theme that you choose to work with. We've also got the option to set border radius. We can apply a background color or background image. And again, we have theme defaults to override the way this background image displayed. We can even simplify this box. So if we know we want to apply a one pixel border to all four sides of this particular text block element, instead of having to type in one pixel on each one, we can check the box that says simplify controls, and that will strip it out and show us just one entry box for each of those individual options, the margins, the borders, and the padding. If we switch back to the general tab, we can start working with the normal editor that we have with WordPress. So all of the icons you're used to and the add media option, even the visual and text options are available to us in there. Before we start working with this, I wanna take one moment to take a look at the top right hand corner you can see we can minimize and we can close this box but we also have an option to customize this particular element so if we click on this we can choose from element presets so anything we set up in this particular box we could save that as a preset so we could call it back up and use this as the basis of other text blocks in the future alternatively we could set this up as a default so every new text block would have the settings and the information we configure inside this first text block settings window applied to it every time we created a new one. So those are great options. So now we've got the normal text editing tools. We can add media so we can put images inside here if we want to. We can edit our text and we can use any of the tools we have available. We can even toggle the toolbar to get the expanded options that are available to us. We switch between the visual option and the text version so we can work in code view. And as you can see, we've got all the standard WordPress icon buttons available to us inside the code view and visual view. But if we scroll down, you can see we now have CSS animation options. And if we click, you can see we have a range of five different options available in there, including top to bottom, bottom to top, left to right, and so on. And this will animate this specific element in when the page actually loads up. We've also got the extra class name. So if we wanted to apply custom CSS styles to this specific text block or any of the elements that we give the same class name, we can just name it at this point and then we can call it up later on and we can customize that specific CSS class and apply it to any element that uses that name. 
Once we've finished, we can hit Save Changes. Alternatively, we can hit Close if I don't want to do anything to this particular text block. So we'll hit Save Changes, and as you can see, that now creates the element inside our row. That now opens up the Single Image Settings block. So you can see it looks very familiar. It looks the same kind of options available to us inside the text block, but these are now specific to this particular widget. So you can see we've got the option to put a widget title in there, we can specify the source of the image, we can choose the image, and we have a whole range of other options available to us. We also have the Design Options tab, and if we click on that you can see all the same options are available to us in there. We also have the option in the top right hand corner to specify the element presets. So this works in exactly the same way as it did with the text block. So if we switch back over to the General tab, you can see everything we have on here has a Help option underneath it that will tell you exactly what each one of these options requires from you. We can leave the widget title as it is because we don't want any title to be applied to that. We can leave the Media Library set, but we have options for External Link and Featured Image. We'll choose an image in a moment. You can see we can specify the size of the image, so we can go with things like thumbnail, medium and large, the standard definitions that are applied as part of WordPress. Alternatively, you can put the exact width and height element that you want in there. So you could do 200 by 100, 150 by 300, whatever you want. You can add a caption, so if you've applied a caption to your image inside the Media Explorer, that will be applied in there. You can also specify the image alignment, we can choose from left, right and centre the image style, and we have a range of different options available. And again, with this, it's worth noting that not every theme that you may choose will support this. So don't be surprised if you choose its style in this, the image, and it doesn't work out on the front end of your website. Just be aware that that's down to the theme itself. You can see we can base an action if the image is clicked. So we can do things like we can set it to none so nothing happens, so it's not clickable. You can click for the larger image. You can open that using a pretty photo. You can use a custom link to go to a different page or a different site, or you can use a zoom control. So we have a whole range of options. Again, we have the CSS animation function, and you can see we have all the same options in there. So we could animate these images when the page loads. And again, finally, we have the extra class name. So if we wanted to apply a custom CSS style to this, we could give it a class name, and then we can create our custom style, reference that class, and apply it to every single item that has that class name associated with it. Okay, so let's now choose an image to be used in this particular widget. So what I need to do is click on the plus and then the image icon. That will bring up the normal WordPress browser to allow us to either upload a file or choose it from our media library. And in this example, I'm just going to drag and drop a file in, upload that, give it an alt tag, and then we'll choose that. So we'll say set image, and that will now apply that to our Visual Composer widget. So for this example, I don't want to use thumbnail as the image size. I'm going to put the actual size of the image in there, which is 350 pixels by 197. So now I've specified exactly the size of this image, so any scaling that will happen based upon the browser size will keep that aspect ratio for me. I don't want anything else on there, but I want to set my image alignment to be center, because when we work with a mobile device, when this drops into single columns, it makes more sense to have the image centralized, because it'll look nice and neat on the page. And we'll just leave it at that. I don't want anything else to happen, so I'll just click, click Save Changes. That's created our new widget and applied the image to it. I can reorder that now so I can put it above my block of text. I'm now going to duplicate that image twice. So clone that twice. And then I'm going to put that in position on the other two columns. So now if I wanted to change the picture in there, I can simply come up to click on Edit. I can click the X to get rid of the image. I can click Plus, And then I can choose an alternative image. So for now, I'm just going to use the same image again, but you can see the process. Finally, I click Save Changes, and there's our three-column layout. Now, for example, I might not want this three-column layout to be sitting underneath this one, so I can just grab the grab handle in the top left-hand corner, reposition that, and reorder everything that I, the way I wanted to. So let's say, for example, I wanted to put a separating line between these two, 
I can just simply come down to add element. I can specify I want to put a separator in there. I can take a look at the options that are available inside the separator settings panel. And as you can see, we've got the design options available again. We can set default values. And we've got the general tab, which gives us all the options that are available specifically apply into this separator. So for this example, I'm just going to specify 50% for the width and I'll leave everything else as it is. Hit save changes and then reposition that in between my three column and my two column rows. So that's the basics of working with visual composers, rows and columns and the various different widgets we can use in there. We've also got some extra controls we can work with on a row by row basis. So if we take a look at the first row, you can see the three icons at the end that we covered initially at the beginning of this video. So let's take a look at the edit row icon. And we'll see that the row settings gives us additional features that we can work with that apply to the row itself and not necessarily the content that sits inside it. So we can specify exactly how the row is dealt with. So we can do things like we can set the default value or we can stretch the row, the row and content or we stretch the row and content with no paddings. We can put in column gaps so we can space out the different columns or we can increase or decrease the number of pixels that are splitting those apart. We can specify whether it's a full height row, equal height, and a whole range of other options. We've also got the design options available to us. And again, we can set the default element presets inside this. So every single new row we create can either have a default value set on there or we can choose from a predefined template that we want to work with. So this gives you some real control over how each of the rows are interacted with inside your website design. Now we'll take a look at these in future videos, but for now it gives you a good idea of the level of control you have with Visual Composer. It really does add a huge amount of versatility to your website without having to understand any code whatsoever. So we'll close this down and we'll wrap this video up here. So that's the basics of Visual Composer. Hopefully this will give you a good understanding to get the grips with working with Visual Composer to create your complex page layouts. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. Finally, please subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date with all of the new content that's added every single week. Well, until next time, take care.